Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about great programmers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the best way to become a great programmer? Well, I would say that allowing yourself to uh, be wrong about solutions rather than uh, uh, rather than falling into the pit of idealism is the surest way for you to become a great programmer let me explain that a little bit because uh, the thing is usually I see that there are two types of developers uh, in the space of becoming of greatness do you have the developers who uh, create solutions to concrete problems and usually it's a tool, in some cases it is a process that works really well, but it's solving an actual problem and it gets adoption, like actual adoption by people. And then you have a lot of other developers, like the people who have a lot of ideas, but they don't really see that mass adoption. They don't really get anywhere with it. There's a lot of blog articles about uh, idealistic patterns or new ways of working and processes where you can do things in a different way that is of course going to to uh, to make the difference and so forth but nobody really ever buys into it. It never becomes a standard practice or it doesn't really become best practice. And I believe that the fundamental difference between these two is that the people who lobby for ideas quite hefty in a hefty way are people who are married to the solution instead of the problem. What I mean by that is that I meet a lot of developers and they are usually the people who never really get anywhere with anything uh, even at the top level and even at like just a local company level and these are the idealists these are the people who believe that there's always a better way of doing absolutely everything but they can never seem to get to a point where other people believe that as well and I I always have this it's impo I've never had a discussion with a developer like that where they could answer this question for me in an honest way because they're not able to see it in any other way. And the question is very simple. If it's this hard for you to get this idea to be adopted and actually have other people see the value in, a, in this thing, have you ever considered that the idea itself may not actually be sustainable? Maybe it is too idealistic. Maybe this uh, like, uh, you should abandon this idea, or change it, or reevaluate if there if, wh wh where the issues are, and take it from there. That that's never on the table because like they will always tell you, oh, but we're doing this and it's we're trying to be flexible and so forth and so forth. And I come back to the same thing. And yet nobody buys into it. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the open market, how many companies have had weird, queak, like kooky ideas and gone bankrupt? I'm not saying that you shouldn't try new things out. I'm just saying that it is not. It seems to be beyond some developers that some ideas are not good, or like they, they either they're too, too far ahead of their time, or I don't know. Every human being or every single software developer. It's too stupid to understand how genius it is. The end results are still the same. The ideas are not going to go anywhere. And I believe that in the best case scenario, this is because there has to be a progression. In other words, you cannot, if you're too ahead of your time, you might see the society, see people catch up with you sooner or later and realize how smart you actually were, or you just had a bad idea, or an idea where we never actually appreciate it. And I, I have a friend who likes to say to me that he has this uh, mental trickery we, uh, or like this uh, mental exercise we do when we're drunk. He says, Frederick, if I put you in, in the middle of the woods and then I ask you to build a television, can you do that? And then we discuss back and forth. We usually do this with uh, people who are new in our social group. And the I'll spoil the ending. The end result is always that people start to understand that in order for you to build a television outside in the woods, an entire, like many, many generations of other tools and uh, developments and practices needs to take place before you can do that thing. 
because you can't go from one thing to the other there has to be some micro steps in between and the same thing is true here for any solution if you can't get to the first step with your solution it's probably not a good solution these are the idealists who usually go on go and become tech talkers and architects and all the all the same sort of thing right and then you have the people who actually get somewhere with their ideas and i think what's beautiful about about this category of people is that most of the time they either are like they're genius like type of people who really get something right on the first try they're not the norm i would say usually these people are the sorts of people who are married to the problem and that's the sort of person i believe that you that this is the best way for you to become a great programmer you should be married to the problem in other words you should not ask or you should not care about the concept of uh, what, what the solution might be you should look at the problem and then have a think about all right with all the different ways that I could possibly solve this, which would be the most effective way of solving it? How can I get concrete results in the hands of people? Because I can tell you right now, guys, if you present a solution to the vast majority of people, the person who can, in the most direct way, solve the problem, bring the most direct results, is going to be the person who wins. Every single time. You can have manuals you can have entire libraries of ways to change your life so that this thing doesn't affect you all that much anymore but the fundamental truth is that people are usually about instant gratification and they're lazy they want fast results and they're lazy and if you can cater to that which is usually the thing that usually the thing that happens when you create a really good solution to something you make people more effective they feel like this is much easier to deal with than anything else that's going to be a much much faster result than trying to inspire them and so forth these things are still important but if you want quick results and actual con and get people to to appreciate the work that you do it's much easier to in uh, to actually bring direct results uh, as instead of trying to take a more holistic approach to solving the problem and if you look at how IT works the way the trends start it usually starts the same way you usually see someone inventing something like say Kubernetes Docker things like that and people immediately like they kind of buy into the idea immediately because it's very concrete that this thing is improving your workflow it's helping you actually improve things and then from that stems all the other ideas all the other people uh, kind of get on the bandwagon and buy into this thing and you will of course then have other people who go on stages and try to lobby for how you can use things better or so forth and so forth so by just solving the fundamental problem you've actually gained more than a person who tries to change the hearts and minds of people will ever get in many cases it's not always the case because there are absolutely processes that have taken like taking the entire uh, world by storm such as say code reviews or agile program uh, agile work processes these things are absolutely things that work but they have one thing in common and that is that they are concrete enough and bring a, it's clear enough to the adopters or the implementers how this thing is helping an example of something that is not that where it's not really clear if it's helping or not is say mob coding nobody can to this day tell you if it's wor if it works or not I have many 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 uh, people around me and in, even in my own company who will be very glad to go and tell me that that's not the case Frederick right? it's very obvious that this is uh, that this is working and I go can you show me the results can you show me anything that indicates that this is working I had a discussion about this with my coworker the other day where he explained well, well if you do mob coding you don't really have to test as much and I go that's absolutely false and you still have to do the code review and he goes no but because you're three people you've actually already done the code review and I go no because you have no guarantee that the people who are sitting there three together are actually thinking in the same mind they're in the same mind space when they're doing the mob coding as they would have been if they did the prayer program uh, the the mob coding I can tell you right now that my mind is working half speed when I'm some when I have somebody be, uh, next to me because that is a distraction I'm much more focused on details when I'm by myself how are you gonna solve that you can't because you are dealing with people 
and your idea is based on an idealistic person or an idealistic group of people that's why it's never gonna work same thing with the testing if you have three people that you that test something or like they verify it together that doesn't mean that you don't have to write the unit test you still have to write the unit test because the next time somebody changes that code you have no guarantee that these people are even here or they even remember what they did at at an earlier point in time. It might be 10 years between the last time this code w was changed. So you still have to do it. That's why unit tests is a de facto standard and mob coding is this curiosity that some people are experimenting with. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to be a great programmer you need to be a problem solver. You need to be a person who brings concrete results that people can understand and appreciate because if you become too much of an, an, an idealist at best you're going to be a tech talker or somebody who tries to push uh, you know a, a thought leader and I wouldn't even give you that I wouldn't call you a thought leader because in, in my opinion even a thought leader needs to be able to inspire people to action. If you can't get people to adopt the thing or you can't get solutions to the problems that people have and actually see these results, see the fruits of your labor, you're not actually producing anything. You're just making noise. And noise is useful because sometimes from noise actual solutions come out. But if you want to actually make a difference, you have to give people solutions to real life problems that can be adopted because idealism, although it's great and we should strive towards it, is always going to be something that is beyond you. Because if you were to be able to reach the ideal, it wouldn't be an ideal. It would be reality. Have a great day.